So it's my great honour to introduce my local MP, my good friend, my leader of the Labour Party and the next Prime Minister of this great country, Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here this morning. And thank you, Martha, for what you said. I was earwigging through the door. Martha is a truly wonderful old friend of mine. We've known each other since the 1970s and worked together on so many things. And it's people like Martha that give you good advice, whether you want it or not. <laughs> And it's always sound, and it's always human, and it's always humanitarian. Martha, thank you for that and for everything you've done for all of our communities over all these years. Thank you. And thank you, thank you, Rowie, for what you said and the inspiration you are to so many young people of the way you articulate the wishes, the views, the ambitions, and the collective view of young people. Thank you so much for that, for today, and all the other things that you do. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you all for being here today, here in Whitechapel, because this is an area of fascinating history, history of people who've migrated to make their homes here from all parts of the world to live in a place of safety, a place where the Nazis tried to take over in the 1930s and were defeated. The Jewish community and the Irish community came together to stop the Nazis marching through this area. And Toynbee Hall, just across the road, where one of the great Labour Prime Ministers, Clement Attlee, worked before he became an MP and before he became leader of our party. And he worked to support, help and empower the homeless and the poor people of this area. And an awful lot of what he learnt in this area formed the policies of the 1945 Labour government, which gave real security for people who had only ever known the insecurity of poverty and being thrown out of their homes. We can all learn from our history and always respect the history of those that stood up for others at great personal cost themselves on many occasions. And I think we should always reflect that in our attitudes and our work. This morning, <clears throat> I'm going to say a few words about you, all of you in the audience, so I hope you don't mind, and even some about me, and I hope I don't mind. <laughs> but if you don't mind, I'll come to that bit a little bit later on. First, I want to say that this general election, more than any I have previously fought, will define our times. Last week, I said the dividing lines in this election could not be clearer. I pointed to a clash of interests between working people on the one hand and the privileged and the super rich on the other. This is not about a government getting its priorities muddled and it's not simply a case of saying one thing and doing another. It's about presiding over a rigged system that shapes our lives. Of course, that's not something the Conservatives want to talk about. It's why I think they're so desperate to make this general election all about Brexit. Don't be taken in. The Conservatives would much rather make incredible promises about Britain's future outside the European Union than talk about a scorecard of broken promises and neglect stretching back over seven years. <laughs> Even their approach to Brexit betrays what they're really about. Unlike Labour's jobs first plan, it's both reckless and rigid, and entirely in keeping with their record in government. Make no mistake, a Brexit for the few is being cooked up 
by this government. <laughs> One where any money saved is handed out as tax cuts to the super rich and their corporations, where new trade deals with the United States and elsewhere are used to drive down our working conditions, environmental regulations and food standards. I think you can guess what is likely to happen to the many in a rigid and reckless Brexit. What about the Conservatives themselves and their friends and their backers? Do you think their personal prospects will suffer? Do you think their lives will get harder? As wages slide and jobs become even less secure? Unlikely. Very unlikely. I think you'll agree. And that's because the Conservatives and their backers can afford to opt out when things go wrong. They've got form on this. They've been doing it for decades. They already send their children to the most exclusive schools and universities. They already dominate the upper rungs of every career ladder. In truth, they have a get-out-of-jail-free card when the Conservatives are at the controls. So, I have a message for all of you today. Unless you too have a get out of jail free card, it's the same. And it's time to step up. And when I say step up, I mean register to vote. Claim your future. You have until the 22nd of May to register. Over 2.4 million, let me say that figure again, 2.4 million young people are missing from Britain's electoral register. Barely 40% of 18 to 24 year olds normally turn out to vote. The Conservatives are more than happy with this state of affairs. Apathy and resignation will secure them seats on election day. I ask all of you to step up, because when I talk to people all over the country, I'm struck by something very troubling. It's not that our young people don't have the energy and talents to succeed. Our country is full of potential. Listen to Rowie this morning. Look, at, look around you at young people and all that they do and want to do. But something hangs in the air. It typically goes unspoken. It's the unheard story why so many of us are scaling back our hopes and dreams in favour of just getting by. It's the reason why this country is unable to unleash its potential. Because as families, communities, entire regions, we're all being held back. If you're young, like many today, it's a familiar feeling. If you feel trapped in a job that barely covers your rent, if you feel anxious about keeping on top of credit cards and loans, if your heart sinks each time you see the price of homes displayed in the estate agents and letting agents' windows, then you're being held back. In a fairer Britain, government would be bending over backwards to unleash your potential. You are the future, after all. That is a priority every government should follow. You'd be supported and confident and equipped for higher paid and secure jobs. You'd be able to look ahead without mounting debt, mounting debt taking away any life choices you want to make. And you'd be able to enjoy the security and rewards of one day bringing up a family in a home of your own. Being held back means we can't provide the life that we want for ourselves and those closest to us. And it hurts. It makes people angry and, worst of all, resign to the idea that nothing can be done about it. We end up blaming ourselves or each other 
causing discord and division. That is life in modern conservative Britain. It's why a fairer country has to be the choice at this election. It's also why Labour will unveil plans to upgrade our economy. Because unless we move from a rigged to an upgraded economy, there can be no fairer Britain. That's what June the 8th is all about. Don't let the Conservatives hold you back. Don't let the Conservatives hold Britain back. And now, for a sentence I've yet to utter in my political life. <laughs> I've never done this before. Enough about you. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> I can see you're all listening. <laughs> I've just laid down the gauntlet and asked you to step up. Each and every one of us must step up for this country, including me. In the 34 years since I became a Member of Parliament, as you're probably aware, I've been attacked for what I believe in. But it has not changed my core values. And sadly, many of the problems we faced then are still with us. In 1983, before many in this room were born, I stood up in Parliament for the first time and used my maiden speech to condemn deeply damaging cuts in public services and our precious National Health Service. The tragedy is, I could make the same speech today and it will once again hold as true today as it did then. Between then and now, I've learned firsthand how the privilege of being a Member of Parliament could help achieve change, profound and lasting change. At the time, then, 1983, young protesters were being shot dead on the streets by the racist apartheid regime in South Africa. Nelson Mandela and hundreds of African National Congress leaders were in prison. The Conservative government refused to impose sanctions on South Africa. They entertained the leaders of the regime and banned protests outside the South African Embassy in London. Being a Member of Parliament helped bring attention to that ban and the wider cause of South Africa's liberation and got a group of us arrested. But the space for people in Britain to organise in support of freedom in South Africa was defended and strengthened. And I realised then that political leaders can, if they want to, create and preserve the space for others to organise and transform countries and their own communities. My role is different now, but there's a common thread. We should act together, act together to overturn unfairness and create a better society. It became my yardstick for measuring the performance of governments going back three decades, Labour and Conservative. In that time, I've seen Prime Ministers and leaders of the opposition come and go. But for all their achievements and their failures, what I didn't see was a sustained attempt to rid this country of what really holds people back. I never heard a clear invitation for everyone in the country to work together and create a real alternative to our rigged economy. So when I was asked to put my name forward in Labour's 2015 leadership election, I felt I should step up. I didn't expect to win. But under my leadership, we forced the Conservatives into one U-turn after another over cuts to tax credits, <laughs> disability payments... <coughs> and their recent attempt to increase national insurance for the self-employed. And I respect my critics when they make a reasoned case. They are doing 
what I've often tried to do, and that is to challenge leadership. It reminds me of the 1990s, when the political mainstream bought in the conservative ideas about markets, finance and the economy. It ultimately left us with no defence <coughs> against a global financial crisis that had, it root, had its roots in another country's housing market, the subprime mortgage crisis in the USA. Again, it taught me that if leaders go unchallenged, they can make some of the most damaging mistakes. And if party leaders put themselves ahead of serving the people, they stop listening and even put our country at risk. Barely nine months into Theresa May's premiership, there are clear warning signs that she and her closest advisers are slipping into that presidential bunker mentality. Whereas it is the job of leadership to hold open the space for dissent, new thinking and fit for purpose policy. So while it might not be the stuff of sound bites, I've always believed in standing firm and empowering others to make up their minds and come on board when they are ready. <clears throat> it's that mindset that gets community centres and nurseries built and increasingly defends them from closure by this government that's so destructive of so much of our community facilities all over the country. It's the mindset that negotiates hard for a better conditions at the workplace. It's the mindset that serves the many, not the few. <clears throat> For many years, I couldn't see much beyond how so many political leaders manipulated us while giving in again and again to powerful vested interests. I did not want to be like that. And it wasn't clear to me there could be another way. But I've learned there is. Whereas insecure leaders want to feel stronger by asking you to give them more power, I recognise strong leadership as equipping you with more power. <clears throat> and that starts by encouraging you to step up and register to vote as part of a wider engagement with all of our communities. Because there can be no doubt that these are very anxious times. Individually, more of us face uncertainty at work. Nationally, we wonder how we will make the transition out of the European Union in a way that protects jobs and living standards. And globally, we wonder how safe we are as extreme right-wing movements and violent conflicts spread. I hope you can see now that there is more than one way to, response, to respond. We could seek a fragile calm and hope someone in power knows what they're doing and will guide us through. That means looking to whoever's in charge and welcoming their reassurance. We don't look further and we don't ask questions. <clears throat> it's the response the few have bet on the many settling for. I'm in this job because I believe there is a better way to respond. It's about rejecting the reassurances or simple slogans from government. It's about sharing ideas and deciding upon real and lasting answers. We're not going to have free thinking shut down by a hostile media or an elite that scoffs at anyone who dares to step out of line. <clears throat> I 
No, each of us, each of us in this hall here today <clears throat> has a contribution to make. We have ideas for a better tomorrow and we are going to respond together. <clears throat> we are a party that wants to bring people together and ideas and harness the thirst for real and lasting change. If you agree, our times demand a response from all parts of our society and all corners of our country, then I'm very proud to be your leader. If you want someone to hold that space open for you and help change the direction of your life in our country, then I'm proud to be the leader of this party. Because it's only through unleashing our talent that this country can succeed on the world stage. Since its foundation, the Labour Party has believed we are richer together. Seven years into a Conservative government, we are poorer for being apart. Across the country, people are being held back like never before. Unless we change course, we can expect more insecure work for less pay, more stress for less time with our families and loved ones. It's all gone too far and the country knows it. Quite simply, only the Labour Party can deliver a fairer Britain. But we need your help to do so. We need the help of everybody to do so. Please, all of you, register to vote. Step up for Britain and vote Labour on June the 8th. Thank you very much.